Hey, what is up guys, Simon here. And this is the first video of a new series where I want to build a game with you guys. So this is part number one, where I want to download Entitas, set it up, and I want to show you the very basics. So let's jump right into it and let's create a new Unity project. I will call it Entitas Schmup. And the first thing I want to do is go to Window, Asset Store or Command 9 and search for Entitas. All right, there it is. So let's download it and import everything. All right, there it is. Now we should see a new menu item here. So we open the preferences by going to Tools, Entitas, Preferences, or I like to use the shortcut Command Shift E. And to set up Entitas, all we have to do is click the Auto Import button and hit Enter. And this will set up everything for us. So if we try and hit Generate now, we get an error message because we never actually wrote any code and there is no assembly c -sharp project yet. So if we take a look, this is our project. These are all our files. There is no project yet. So we can fix this easily by just going to Assets, Open c -sharp Project. And this will generate the project for us. Take a look. Uh, in my case, it's assembly C sharp. So your project might be called differently. So just make sure that this name is the same as here, which it is in my case. So now we are able to generate. Okay, cool. So let's create our first component to see if everything works as expected. So I will create a health component. And I will use my templates. So let's add a public float value. All right, so let's go back to Unity and generate and let's see if it works. So instead of going to the preferences and clicking generate, what I want to do is just using the shortcut and I go to Jenny generate. So Jenny, if we take a look, that's just the name of the code generator. So this is the part of the code generator. Um, it's called Jenny. So let's click generate or what I'd like to use is the shortcut command shift G. Great. And if I take a look now in the generated folder, I see the health component. Great. So that was the setup of the default built-in code generator, but I strongly recommend to use the new Rosling code generator. So let's set that one up as well. So we'll just open the anti-task folder in the finder and unzip the Jenny zip and move all the contents to the root of the project outside of the assets folder. Great. So now I can delete that. So let's navigate to the Entitas Schmup example in the terminal to set up the Rosling code generator. And that's really simple to do. You just run, um, if we take a look, um, there's a jenny.exe. So let's just run this file. So we see the help screen of the code generator and I'd like to use the auto import command here to set up the code generator. And I will use the additional argument minus S for silent mode, press enter. And now I will choose the new Roslyn code generator instead of the built-in one. So I press two and again, I press two and everything is set up and you're ready to go to use the new Rosling code generator, so let's try it. With the gen command and we're done. Awesome. So as a last step, I'd like to set up a shortcut in my IDE to be able to generate even faster. So let's do this. I will go back to Rider, create a new configuration where I want to execute the Jenny exe. So I locate the Jenny exe 
There it is. And the arguments are client gen. I also call this command like this. Awesome. The working directory is the root of the project. And that's basically all we have to do. We don't have to build anything before, so I can remove this step. Hit OK. And now let's just run it. And we see an error because we haven't started the server yet. So let's do this. It's pretty simple by just double clicking Chenny server. And let's try it again. Okay, so it generated, as we can see here. So we can hide the terminal now and just ignore it and we're ready to go. So in my case, I can now use the shortcut command R to run Jenny client gen. So let's uh, make an example and see if it really works. So I create a new position component. I press the shortcut command R to generate. And let's see if the file is there. So there should be a game position component, add position, replace position, remove position. Awesome. So it works. Okay, great. So this was a really straightforward setup. So let's start with the basics. Let's go back to Unity and let's create an entry point. So I will just create a new game controller here. And I will add a game controller script. This will serve as an entry point to our application. And let's also clean up a little bit. So I'd like to have all my anti-task related code in sources and all Unity related code in a scripts folder. I also like to have a folder for my components. All right, so let's do a simple example. And let's just create an entity with a health component and let's see what we can already do with it. So the first thing we need to do is have a context. And now we can create entities. So I will use the game context and create an entity. And now we can just use the generated methods and say add health. Let's go back to Unity and see what we can do already. Now, if I hit play, I will see both contexts. So if we take a look in the preferences real quick, I see I have set up a game and an input context by default. You can have as many or as little contexts as you like. So I see both of them. And in the game context, we created one entity. So I can unfold it. And I see it has a health component, entity zero with a health component. If I click it, I see the value 100 and we can now change it to whatever we want. For example, 200. Cool. We can also click the context and create new entities. Um, add maybe health with 500. Yeah, why not? Let's add a position with one, two, three. And if we take a look here, we see both entities now, one with the health and one with the health and the position. Awesome. So you can remove components, you can add them, and you can destroy the whole entity. Or you can destroy all entities um, by clicking the context. And as we can see now, we have two reusable entities because Entitas reuses all entities and all components that's a nice way to reuse, allocate memory and to go easy on the garbage collector. So if I create a new entity now and go back, I will see I pull it out of the reusable entities. If I do it again, I see both reusable entities have been reused. So that's really nice. And the same thing happens with the components. So if I add the health component, it's actually not allocating any memory. It's reusing the old one. So that's really nice. Cool, now let's create our first system. Let's go back to the game controller. So we'll quickly add a new folder for my systems. And let's just create a system that locks the health of all entities. So I will call it lock health system. And it will be just an execute system. 
So now I want to show you how you can get entities um, that you're interested in in a system. Um, in general, all logic in Entitas should be always in systems. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, I don't need the contexts, all right. So what I want to have, I want to get all entities with a health component, right? So I will say context game. Um, this is called a group. So I want to get a group with a certain filter. So I use the game matcher health. This will create a group for me. And this group will always be up to date with all the entities that have health at any point of time. So I will store it so I can later in the execute, I can just iterate over it. Cool. So now I can just access the health by saying entity.health.value. And let's just log it. Awesome. So let's recap. We have a system that creates a group with all entities that have health. And whenever we create an entity and add the health component, it will be immediately part of this group. And in the execute, we just iterate over all entities in this group, grab the health and log it. All right. So two things I want to do. So first of all, I want to show you another way how to get the contexts by just using the static shared instance. This is really useful if you will use context somewhere else, for example, in mono behaviors where you don't have access to it. So you can just grab it with a static instance. And now let's create a new system. And if I execute it and run the scene, I will see it printed health 100 here. So it grabbed our entity and access the health component and prints it. Now let's move this code to the update. So we will do it every frame. And I will just call execute every frame now. As we can see, it's printing health each frame. So if I grab the health component and change the value to, let's say 200, it logs 200. Change it again to 500, it logs 500. If I create a new entity and add the health component, maybe 777, all right. So I see both values are printed, 500 and 777. All right, cool. So that's a good time to show you another type of system. And this is called a reactive system. Because we don't always want to lock the health. We only want to lock it when the health actually changed, right? So let's go there and I will just keep that for a second for reference. So I will just create a reactive system now instead. That's my template for my reactive system. I will have a constructor where I pass in the context where I'm working on. Then I have to implement the get trigger. So it's basically saying which components are you interested in. So which changes will trigger the system. And it's the health component. Then we can access, if we copy and paste it. Now the difference is we get all the entities as a list that actually changed. And now we can iterate over those. And as a good measure, whenever you access something like health, we should also filter it to ensure that we actually have this component. And that's basically a really common pattern you will see. You will trigger for a certain component, then you will filter for everything that you're interested in and at least for everything that you will access. All right, let's see how this looks like. If we run the scene, so whenever I grab the entity now and change the value, say 200, it will trigger the reactive system and it will print it once. One more time, 400. And as we can see, we see the logs here. All right, cool. Now let's do another system uh, where we actually create that entity. Because as I said earlier, all logic should be in systems. This was just a test. And it's also a good time to show you yet another type of system 
the initialize system. Let's create a new system and we call it create player system. And this will be an I initialize system. And, and we have to implement the initialize method. All right, so we can grab this code, remove it and add it in the initialize. Great. So let's create this system as well. And now let's just initialize it and call initialize. So this will create the entity and from there on we execute the reactive system. And there it is. Great. And these are pretty much the basics. So you will end up having a lot of systems. So let's just pretend we have a few of those um, and maybe a few execute systems. But there's even an easier way to manage all those systems because you might end up having hundreds and hundreds of systems. Each doing a single thing following the single responsibility principle. So let's just create a wrapper for that to make our lives easier. And I usually create a new class called root systems. And I will just subclass the feature class, which is basically a wrapper for systems. And now I can add systems here. For example, to create player system and the log health system. So we have now a nice place where we can manage all our systems. We can create a big list of systems. And if we want, we can also nest those. So we can group systems together in a, yet another feature subclass and use that within another feature subclass. And basically this is the way how to manage your systems. So we can get rid of both of those. And I will just create a new systems instance. Oh, I can inline the contexts. Great. I can call initialize and execute. So let's run this again and see if it works. There's the entity. We got the first log message. And if I change the value, I will see it prints the value here. All right, great. So I hope this video helped you to get started. In the next video, I plan to actually start with the real project, um, setting up a Git repository, setting up unit tests, and start implementing the first features. As always, you can get the latest version on the official GitHub repository. And if you want to use the new Rosling code generator, you can just grab it from the Unity Asset Store. Thanks for watching and I hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos and I'll see you in the next one.